Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub, and on this episode, we're going to make this awesome wall mount arcade cabinet. Okay, so let's make this arcade. So I'm going to just start by taking a couple of scraps that I have from a previous video. Um, in fact, it was from a previous arcade video. And um, it's a basically, it's a little more than a uh, quarter of a sheet, which is about all you need to make this arcade. Um, I'm gonna start by using some double-sided tape and just uh, taping these two pieces of scrap together so that I can cut out the sides um, in one go. Um, but it's certainly fine if you don't have that or don't want to, you could cut each side out separately. Um, but before we get started, I actually want to answer uh, a question that I know is going to happen in the comments. It never fails. Um, within just a few minutes of posting a video on building an arcade, somebody comments, they said, well, I can't make that arcade because I don't have all your fancy tools. And I want to dispel that because the only tool that you actually need to build this arcade is a jigsaw. And um, you can get a jigsaw at Harbor Freight or any of the big, big box stores for like 50 bucks or less. And so you need that and you need a pencil. And with those two things, you can build this arcade. So please, please, please do not let fancy tools stop you from building an arcade. You can do it. A jigsaw and a pencil. That's all you need. You'll glue the side panels together. You don't need screws. You don't even need a screwdriver. Let's get started. The first thing I did was to take some double-sided cloth tape. This stuff is super thin. Some people call this carpet tape. And then I just added a few strips to the top board. Then I placed the two sheets together. This carpet tape makes a very strong bond. Next, I measured out all of the marks from the plans I created in SketchUp and drew lines for the bottom portions of the arcade. This makes it easy because you don't have to worry about specific angles. If you make the marks in the right place, you can draw a line between the two points. I continued measuring and drawing lines for the top or marquee portion of the arcade. Again, to get the angles, just connect the two points. And for the final angle, you only need to connect the last two dots. Okay, so we've got the arcade side panels laid out um, on a couple of pieces of MDF that are uh, attached to each other with double-sided tape. So we're going to cut them both out at the same time. and. Um, so you'll notice that there's no um, arched um, or rounded over corners like are on the pictures um, on the plans. And that is so that it makes this so much easier to lay out. Um, you don't have to know the angles or any of that to lay it out. And then so you're probably wondering, well, how do I get those uh, arcs on there? And what's the radius of them and all of that? And um, much like the angles, you really don't need to know that. And you shouldn't worry about it if you lay it all out appropriately. Um, then, then you can add those after the fact. And so um, you can do that with something like this. So like Rockler makes these circle jigs and you could use that and they're marked where the center sections are and just pick the appropriate size. Um, it'd be one inch in this case because it's a half inch over from each side. Um, if you have some of these, that's great. You can use them. Um, I, I tell you what, I, <laughs> to be honest with you, I've had these for years and I think I've used them once. Um, if you don't have something like that, you could always use a paint can, you know, just like you've got to buy a can of paint to paint your arcade, right? So just use a paint can um, and just set it on the sides. And um, But what I always fall back to, it's like my go-to, is I need a one-inch circle. I just get a one-inch socket. This is just a one-inch Craftsman socket. And I'm going to set it where the art needs to be and just trace around it. And I'll show you how that's done. Just bump the socket up to the edges of the lines you drew when laying out the arcade and trace an arc around it. You'll just follow that line with your jigsaw. At the end of the day, these curves can be any size you want them to be, or you can skip them. So, make it your own. The next thing I did was clamp the sandwiched MDF boards down to my workbench so it won't move around and making sure it won't cut into my workbench while running the jigsaw. When running the jigsaw, I like to go slow and take my time. The faster you cut, the more likely you are to make mistakes or get off the lines. I almost always use my air compressor to keep the dust blown away from the line. 
My jigsaw has a built-in blower and, well, it quite figuratively blows. And this completes the two side panels, and they came out great. Just need to split them from the double-sided tape. Over on the table saw, I started cutting out the rest of the parts. After I cut out each part, I labeled it with a letter from the plans to make it easy to keep track of. Remember, you don't need fancy tools for this. You can keep using your jigsaw, a circular saw, or even a manual handsaw. For the wall mounting cleats, I just cut out a single board and then set my table saw to 45 degrees, and then cut it into two pieces. Again, you can do this same operation with your jigsaw by setting the bottom foot to 45 degrees. Part H is the control panel, and it needs some special holes in it, obviously, for our joysticks and, um, and buttons. So um, I've made that really super easy. There's a template on the website. You just uh, cut it out, spray, and just stick it right on there, and then that shows you where to drill all of your holes. Um, there are two types of bits that you can use to drill your holes. Uh, the first is a paddle bit. Well, there's really more than that, but these are the main two. Um, there are uh, paddle bits. Paddle bits work okay. Um, and then there are Forstner bits, and uh, Forstner bits work great. So I highly recommend those. They are a little bit more expensive. If all you can afford is a paddle bit, it'll do just fine. Um, but there is one thing that I want you to know about uh, before you go into this, and that is um, the control panel. In my arcade, it's three quarter inch thick. I chose to use three quarter inch because that gives the best overall look to the arcade. Um, the large buttons go through that all the way, no problem. Plenty of room left to uh, put the nut on. The smaller ones that are the start and select buttons, they do not have enough room left at the bottom to screw the nut on. So the way you handle that is with something called back boring. Um, so basically you drill a hole through, a tiny hole through a starter hole, and then you drill with your Forstner bit on the back side a larger hole that the nut will countersink into. You only need to do that for those two buttons. I'm not going to show how to do that in this video. I have an entire video on how to backbore. Um, just go to thegeekpub.com, type in backbore, you'll find it. Watch that, it'll show you how. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's put the uh, uh, spray and stick template on and let's get started drilling these holes. After sticking on the template, I highly recommend you use a center punch to mark the center of each button. This will make it much easier to center your paddle or Forstner bit in the next step. Okay, here's a little uh, pro tip for you. Before you start drilling, make sure that you put down a uh, piece of uh, waste board or backer board or whatever you want to call it for um, the drill bit to go through into. There's a couple reasons you want to do this. So put that down on the drill press plate or your bench if you're using a, a hand drill and then put your control panel on top of that. Um, the reason that you want to do that, there's actually two good reasons you want to do this. Um, one, when the drill bit goes through the material, it's kind of under force because you're pressing down on it with the drill press or pressing down on it with your hands with the, with the hand drill and it's going to cause blowout on the back side of the board so it's not going to be a very clean finish. Well, this prevents that. The second thing it does is, this is an expensive bit, this Forstner bit, um, you don't want to ruin it. The last thing I want it to do is make contact with this metal table um, or make contact with my workbench <laughs> if I'm using a hand drill over there. So um, always use a piece of waste board underneath um, whatever you're drilling out, in this case our control panel. When drilling with the Forstner bit, you should go fairly slow. Raise and lower the bit a few times during the operation to allow for wood chips to clear the cavity. Once complete, just peel off the template and toss it in the recycle bin. Alright, well now we have all of our boards cut out. Well, almost. There's one more thing that you need to do if you intend to use backer blocks or cleats, um, as some people like to call them, on your arcade. Um, these are just simply three-quarter by three-quarter uh, strips of MDF or plywood. Um, it, it really doesn't matter what length they are because we're going to cut them all up into smaller pieces. But you just need a, a few of these of random lengths. It really just doesn't matter. And we're going to use those uh, to attach all the components together in the way that we're building the arcade, which is going to be cleats, glue, and brad nails. Um, if you're going to just use glue, you can, you can not use these if you want to. 
Um, and if you're going to use screws, there's really no reason to use these either unless you just want to. Um, with screws, you'll just drill into the sides, drill them together, uh, or screw them together with a screw and you're done. Um, this provides a little bit more rigidity, um, especially when you're using glue and brad nails. Um, again, it's completely optional though. Okay, so how this works is really pretty simple. Um, so you have the side panel in this case and the bottom panel, and these two are going to go together. Um, actually, they're going to go together like this. And um, if we just put brad nails in here and we glue it, um, there's going to that means there's going to be brad nails on the on the back side of this, which are going to be visible, and we're going to have to patch those and and um, and, and putty them uh, and paint over them. And I don't really want to have to do that. Um, plus, um, it, brad nails, it doesn't really do a whole lot for this kind of force. Um, it's really meant as more of a shearing type force for, is it, it, brad nails are really, at the end of the day, they're just little mini clamps that are there until the glue is dry, right? So if we use these, then what we can do is we can put glue in here, we can put these, now we'll cut it down, it'll be much smaller, it'll be a piece about this big. But what we'll do is we'll glue that in place and brad nail it in place and that's going to provide so we'll brad nail here and we'll brad nail from this way. That means there will be no brad nails on the outside um, and it becomes all of a sudden a much stronger joint um, while the glue dries. And so that's the way we're going to build our arcade. And so the plans do show exactly where and how big to make the cleats. Um, again, it's really not that important of what size they are as long as there's some contact, you know, a couple, three inches. An inch either way is simply not going to matter um, in size. Um, again, it's just all about getting um, some contact surface that's not there today. So um, again, but that is listed in the plans. I started laying out all of the pieces on one side panel to make sure I didn't miss one. Then it's just a matter of gluing each cleat and putting it in the correct place. I like to use some other cleats to make sure they are spaced exactly three quarters of an inch from the edge. Pop in a couple of brad nails and then use a wet paper towel to wipe away any glue squeeze out. It's just a matter of repeating the same process for each of the remaining cleats. If you don't wipe away the glue squeeze out, a ridge of glue will be left and your panels will not fit snugly. All right. Well, if you watch my channel very often, you know what time it is. It's T-molding time. And so that means that we need to cut a slot in the front of all of the faces that are going to receive T-molding. So like the front of the arcade, uh, sorry, the front of the control panel, um, the front of the arcade sides, and the top and bottom of the marquee. And anywhere else that you wanted to put T-molding on your arcade, it's really up to you. But we need to do this before we assemble it because it'll be really hard to do afterwards. Now, normally, I would use my router table to do an operation like this, which would be just take the component that we're working on, lay it on the table, and then run it up against the router bit. It's a super simple, highly accurate way to cut these um, slots. But today, I'm just going to use this little battery-powered hand jobber. Um, and the reason why is I just want to show another option um, for people who don't have a router table that you can do this with a handheld router. Um, and you can get these again from Harbor Freight or uh, some of the big box stores. Not this specific one, but you can get a decent quality router for between $50 and $100. And so when working with routers, I always clamp what I'm working with to the bench. As with any operation like this, going slow is key to getting good results. Handheld routers can be a little frustrating, so you might want to practice on scraps first. Assembling the arcade is uh, really probably the easiest part. So I find the easiest way to do it is just to take the two side panels, stand them up, and then just take the bottom panel and get it placed. And then uh, we'll glue and brad nail this, and then we'll just move forward with each panel all the way to the top until we're finished. I added some glue to each of the cleats, enough to get good coverage, and then I brad nailed the panels together. If you're using screws instead of glue, make sure to pre-drill each hole so that you don't split the wood. It's worth noting again that glue is what holds the arcade together, Brad nails are just little clamps that hold things in place while the glue dries. Some people choose not to glue down the control panel to make it easier for access later. I've done that on many of my builds. 
Since the top brace is going to hold the arcade to the wall, I made sure to get plenty of glue and put in a few extra brad nails. And the finished assembly is looking really nice. You can see here how the wall cleat will engage to the arcade and hold it to the wall. Well, I'm pretty excited about this. This is turning out even better than I expected. Uh, just from a pure style and, and, and size perspective, I really, really like it. Um, so the next step, we need to move on to um, filling all the nail holes with some putty. And um, we're gonna caulk all the seams anywhere we butted two boards together. We're gonna caulk those seams, and then we're gonna shoot it with primer. And um, I have a full uh, HVLP paint system. And I have to tell you, on projects that are this size, I'm just going to use a rattle can because I can do just as good of work, um, again, on this small size um, as I can with the HVLP and it's just going to be so much easier and there's not going to be anything to clean up. So that's what we're going to do and let's get to it. I added spackling to anywhere there was a hole left from the brad nails and then just used my 5-in-1 tool to remove the excess. You could use other fillers if you prefer, but spackling dries super fast and it won't leave a divot or sink in after it dries. After the spackle dried, I used my orbital sander to clean up all of the surfaces and get it ready for primer. I quickly used a caulk gun and caulked all the visible seams. This is purely optional, but I really like the way it makes the joints invisible. Over on my assembly table, I laid out some painter's paper and then set up some painting pucks to keep the arcade lifted off the table. I then shot the arcade with a single coat of Rust-Oleum primer. The next day, I sanded all of the surfaces and then shot them with Rust-Oleum Flat White. i found if you want to avoid runs, the key to painting with a rattle can is multiple light coats. Alright, so you guys have commented on my videos like at least a thousand times over the last few years going, why do you always make black arcades? Well, I made a white one. <laughs> so. All joking aside, I think this is going to really turn out pretty cool. Um, I am going to use um, a little something different too. I normally use blue T-molding or black T-molding depending upon um, what I'm doing, um, especially if I'm going to cover it with the decal or graphics, right? So, but I'm going to use red T-molding and I'm going to use red buttons and joysticks. And I think that's going to look really cool on this arcade. So it's time to move on to installing the T-molding and it's really super simple to install T-molding. Um, it has a, a T shape to it and that T, the bottom of that T goes into the track that we uh, routed out earlier with the router. Now, um, it will really, really help if you have a, a rubber mallet, uh, something that will allow you to gently tap against the T-molding. And look, we do not want to force the T-molding in. If you are having to force it in this track, the track's not wide enough. This is a sixteenth of an inch. Some T-moldings uh, require an eighth of an inch. Um, some require other dimensions. Uh, you're just going to have to check the T-molding that you bought and make sure you know what size of a, of a, of a, of a slot that it needs to go into. Um, but I am going to show you a few little tips as we go along installing the T-molding. Um, I have an entire video on T-molding tips and tricks. Just go to thegeekpub.com, type in T-molding, you'll find it. It's really cool. Um, so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but I'll show you a couple things as we go through. I like to place the T-molding into the track and then gently tap it into place with a soft-faced hammer. Anywhere the T-molding travels around a corner, I notch the track portion with a pair of side-cutting pliers. On outside curves, I just cut the track in several places to allow it to fan out. As with most operations, going slow is always the best approach. At the ends of the arcade, I needed to cut the T-molding. I recommend using a very sharp knife for this. In other words, get a new blade. I ran into a few places where my hammer wouldn't work, so I just used a scrap cleat as a spacer for the hammer head. This is turning out to be an absolutely gorgeous arcade. I'm so happy with this. Um, I can't wait to get this thing hung on the wall and let the grandkids start playing games. Um, it is time to install the monitor. The astute of you have probably already noticed that I did not install the backer blocks or cleats um, in this arcade. And the reason why 
um, is because when I ordered the monitor, the one that I normally order was not available, it was out of stock. And so I ordered one that was slightly thicker. It's the same exact dimensions around, but slightly thicker. And I wasn't 100% sure because I didn't have it in my hands yet. Um, so I, I didn't want to put those on there and then have to pull them off and move them later. Um, the good news is the monitor that I really like for arcades, the little Acer, it's a little 240 or something like that, um, came in stock right as I was about to start this part of the arcade. So I had Amazon uh, ship one next day and I got it and um, we're going to put that in. So I'm actually going to do something a little bit different on this arcade. Um, this is something, you know, I'm constantly refining things and making the arcades better and updating the plans. Um, and so one of the feedback uh, items that I got from a couple of different users was that they didn't cut their dimensions quite right and there was a little bit of a gap top and bottom on the monitor and sometimes maybe even on the side. Um, although that's usually blocked by the cleat that goes behind the monitor. We are going to install just some weather stripping. I mean, you can get this stuff at Home Depot or off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, super cheap, but it's just basically some foam that's sticky on one side. We're going to stick that down here and we're going to stick it up here. And then when we put the monitor in, it will kind of sandwich between those two and it'll block all the light and it'll make a really nice uh, finished look. Um, this stuff will get smashed really flat, so you won't even notice it. Um, so we're going to do that first. Okay, so one thing I did want to point out while we're putting this um, weather stripping in is that I did oversize uh, the uh, these backer blocks, these smaller ones here and at the top so that the monitor would have a place to rest while we figure out where this backer block needs to go. It's going to go like that. And um, once we have that dimension uh, figured out, or while we get that dimension figured out, these will hold the monitor in place temporarily. The film stripping just goes down on the monitor support brace. I sat the monitor in place and tilted it back against the upper support. If you did this right, it will take some pressure to get it to squeeze into place. Then I added the two missing monitor support cleats with some glue and brad nails. Since the cleats I used were shorter than normal, I just filled the gaps with some more of that foam stripping. Before we start final assembly, I need to take care of one thing. And um, normally I would do this before I um, assembled the arcade, but I wasn't exactly sure what kind of speakers I was going to use on this project because um, I normally like to use these little USB speakers. They're really awesome. They're super skinny, they're self-powered, and they just fit right inside the marquee or anywhere else you want to put them inside the arcade. Uh, but this time, I thought I'd do something a little different, and I wasn't sure they were going to arrive on time, so I didn't want to cut the arcade and then not be able to film it. Um, so we're going to use these little uh, Drock, Drock 3-inch speakers, and I'm going to use this little uh, power amplifier, and it requires its own power. It's one of the reasons I really don't like to use these, but I thought I'd do it different in this video. So I went ahead and created templates uh, for these speakers. If you're going to use these speakers, then you can use the existing templates I already have for all of the other arcades. And I will make updates so that um, these arrive on the other plans as well. But uh, I did make these drilling templates. These are really cool. You can drill them um, on the face of the bottom of the marquee, or you can drill them on the sides of the arcade if that's where you'd rather have them like some people do. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. If you're building this arcade, don't wait until this point. Um, go ahead and drill these holes before you paint. Um, and uh, Let me rephrase that. Before you assemble and before you paint. So let's go ahead and take care of that real fast. I started by placing the template on the arcade with some painter's tape. I didn't want to have to clean spray adhesive off. I then used a punch to mark the center of every hole. I drilled out the mounting holes with a standard bit and then switched over to a Forstner bit to drill out the speaker holes. I also clamped a wasteboard on the inside of the marquee. This will prevent blowout when the bit passes through. Mounting the speakers was simple enough. I just used the included number 8 screws, lock washers, and nuts. Next up, I installed a little LED fixture from Home Depot. This will provide the backlight for the marquee. I then installed each of the buttons into the control panel. 
Normally, I like to use self-tapping screws on the bottom side, but since my control panel is not removable on this build, I went ahead and used four number 8 machine screws with nuts on the back side to secure the joystick. Of course it wouldn't be complete without the knob. On the back side of the arcade, I wanted to clean up all of the cabling, so I used some cable clips to hold the speaker wires, marquee power, HDMI, and monitor power cords in place. And then I zip tied any other loose cables. Since this arcade is so thin, I needed to use one of those 90 degree HDMI adapters to keep the cable from interfering with the wall when we mount it. The little Drock amplifier has six screw terminals on it, four for speaker left and right, and two for power. Then it just plugs into the Raspberry Pi with a 3.5 millimeter audio cable. Well, all of that effort paid off nice because it looks super clean. Now it's time for the fun part, time to build the marquee. I started with a piece of acrylic cut to the right dimensions. I cut out a slightly oversized section of sticky backed vinyl for my Cricut vinyl cutter and then applied that to the acrylic sheet. I used a random gift card as a squeegee to remove the air bubbles and then trimmed the vinyl to the exact size. Using my Cricut, I cut out the letters of my logo and then I applied them to the center of the marquee backer. Then, I ran the cricket like crazy to create something super fun for this arcade. This was a four layer effort and a little bit of a slow go to get everything lined up, but the result speaks for itself. A set of awesome mushrooms is a tribute to one of my all time favorite games. I could not be happier with how that turned out. The marquee glass just slides into place. Using CA glue, I added a couple of decorative trim pieces that will hold it in place permanently. 